Good morning. I'm Terry Farr, Executive Director for the Greater Picayune Area Chamber of Commerce located in Picayune, Mississippi. And today I have a special friend of mine. Uh, you can see we're a little casual, and uh, or I am. I guess this is your working attire. This is Steve McDonald. We, Steve, uh, did we invite anybody else to show up today? Well, his honor, the mayor, I mean, not mayor, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> he thinks that sometimes, but uh, Judge Precious McDonald was invited to attend, but it he must have had an emergency. Must, must at have. The, at the last minute. Yeah, this, uh, this is still going to be a special uh, treat for y'all that are listening, watching, I guess. And, uh, but we did invite uh, Buddy McDonald, and uh, so this was going to be called uh, probably Chamber Chaos. So I guess today maybe it'll be just Chamber Conversation, Chamber Comedy, or whatever. You know, one thing, and, and let me just tell you this, is when you see this, this is not live, you know that, right? This is... It hidden? It's not. This is recorded live. I think there's a difference. So when these people see this, we'll be pushing this out Monday, so, yeah, Monday morning at... Uh, so the people watching this aren't watching it right now. <laughs> well, it's, it's confusing because when they watch it, they're watching it right now. But when we're but doing is, this, they're not right watching now. it because it's not live. Yeah. Okay. You got that? Uh, by the way, well, anyway, so we'll be pushing this out Monday morning about uh, 8 o'clock, and uh, we're doing this Saturday morning. What's your favorite time of day? I like the mornings. You at your best? Well, I don't know about that, but I prefer the mornings. I, I see great um, encouragement, great chance for opportunities. Um I love to listen to the sounds of the morning that uh, the good Lord gives us, birds, uh, the wind in the trees. I just think the mornings are just absolutely beautiful. There you go. Mm -hmm. Morning's my favorite time. Mm -hmm. Morning's my favorite time. Uh, although, yeah, I sort of hate to go to bed because I feel like I might miss something, but I know if I don't get enough sleep, it's not good, so I force myself to go to bed. but. Bounce out of bed pretty quick. So, well, as I was cutting some grass yesterday afternoon, as I went home, I got to thinking about, you know, what are we going to talk about? And I, and I realized we, we have several things in common. I don't know if you know that. Did you know that? We, mm, did you? No. Yeah, we got, I didn't know that. Yeah, we got several things in common. You want me to tell you number one thing that we have in common? Mm -hmm. We speak a, a second language and uh, sarcasm. Oh, wow. <laughs> I thought that was the only language just Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we have, uh, well, you've got, how many kids? you got, what, five kids, five, something like that? Uh, i got four. Four? Four. Four. And all boys? All boys. Okay, yeah. i got uh, three girls, mm -hmm. and those girls are all girls. Mm -hmm. How about that? Well, <laughs> that's... Uh, something to be said about that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. How many grandchildren you got? Um, I have, um, you didn't know I was going to be texting I have two, you. Olivia and Avery, and, um, I may have some on the way, you know. Mm. You putting pressure on anybody? No, I oh, never okay. put pressure on anybody. Oh, well, I got three. I'm an easygoing kind of guy. I don't yeah. Know. I got three. Uh, we, do we go to the same barber? Uh, I don't know. My wife cuts my hair. Oh, uh, we don't go to the same barber. Speaking of wives, we, we both have great wives. Yeah. Strong. You know, Anne's little in size, mm. but she's probably pretty strong, isn't she? She gets done what she wants to get done. There you go. There you go. My she's wife's very, strong. Very capable. Um, we both had uh, strong mothers. I bet you... Probably if you thought oh, yeah. about it, um, you could list a lot of lessons that you learned from your mama. <laughs> hey, <minute> yeah. Joke, yeah. <laughs> I learned one or two. <laughs> oh, shoot. Uh, and yeah. loved every one of them. They, you know, 
we were raised in a very independent family, and um, we were taught things at an early age and enjoyed that, and uh, it paid off, I believe, for us um, as we grew older. Now, between the two of us, one of us learned those lessons better than the other, and I was able to do things, you know, for longer and was uh, able to and willing to do those things. Um, Buddy, not so much. Can we cut that part out? I don't want to hurt his feelings. I'll, I'll see if I can edit it. If I can't, okay. we'll, well just let it run. if you can't, it's the truth. There's yeah. not anything we can do about it. Truth will set you free sometimes. Mm-hmm. He could That's have been right. here to, to defend himself. Well, yeah, he could have been, and he knew to be here. And, uh, you know, he likes to keep his appointments. You think I know. he's over at PJ's waiting on us? Well, I don't know. Uh, I would think that he would have taken the minute to look across the street. Um, or look at his cell phone. But he is a judge, and, you know, they world kind of revolves around judges so um you're in trouble <laughs> i'm never in trouble <laughs> all right so you learned some lessons from your mom <coughs> now i never met your dad so uh do you remember what year your dad passed away and yes, how old sir. was he how old were you he died in 1979 he was 65 um you were a puppy i was 29 uh, had I had been working for him for about five years full time. Wait a minute, he died what year? Seventy nine. Seventy nine. Okay. okay, I'm mm-hmm. sorry. I was thinking and, of my dad. Okay, go ahead. And um, you know, we had probably some of the best times of my life with my father were during that five years. Um, I had a lot of good times with him growing up, but we um, shared a desk. I sat on one side of his desk um, and did the work that he had for me. And um, so we were in close proximity a lot when I wasn't out doing um, other um, jobs around the funeral home, you know, that took me out of the office. Yeah. So how old are you? Sixty. I'm sixty-eight. Sixty-eight. Mm-hmm. So you just turned sixty-eight. Yeah. So I'll be uh, sixty-eight in August. So we uh, went to different schools together, huh? That's right. Um, and I spent some of the best, actually, some some really good years. And and I think I spent like. Um, Four of the best years I spent were in high school. They were two years in the ninth grade and two years in the tenth. And um, you skipped then, the eleventh and twelfth, or they let you out? No, already? I'm just kidding. I, oh, uh, I spent my regular four years. I was a lot of people that felt sorry for me, so they, I was, um, I was moved along, you know, out of the goodness of a lot of hearts. I but. Um, yeah, we, I enjoyed, I enjoyed high school. Okay, so you. A lot of friends. Have you ever lived outside of Pearl River County? Well, yes, I did. I attended um, the University of Mississippi uh, in 1970 to about 72. And I lived in Oxford during those years. And I really enjoyed living in Oxford those years. It, Oxford was about the size of Picayune uh, at that time, no longer. But uh, it was just kind of like being at home. You just were in a in a area where you had all four seasons of the year, whereas down here we pretty much have two. Two. Mm-hmm. Um. So, if you didn't know how old you were, how old would you be? If I didn't know how old I were, was, how old would I be? I'd be, um, I think I would probably be um, somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 to 32, mentally. Mentally. 
So chronologically, you're 68 and then you're... <laughs> yeah, maybe... Is that the word? Chronologically? Six, 68, <laughs> maybe 95, but physically, but mm. um, mentally, I'm, I'm about 30 to 32. So you're just a little bit older than Kenny? He's yeah. 20, he's 29. he would be 30 sometime soon, I think, something like mm -hmm. that. I forgot, but... Um, okay, so if you're so how long do you think you're gonna live is that a that's till a, I die probably it's a good answer yeah. <laughs> I have no idea when that'll be have you got a goal if I got a goal the only goal I ever had about living was since my father died as I believe young at 65 I wanted to live longer than he did. So he made that. I made that. So now, having had um, four bypasses and so far one knee replacement, I am um, I'm hoping that I can make it into my 80s. You wrong, know. wrong answer. Wrong answer. 80s. Man, that's, well, 80, 80s is the new 40. Well, when I get to my 80s, then I'm going to hope I can live to 120. Well, that's well, yeah. Why don't we? Just I like I like to compartmentalize things. Mm. You know, it's so you, you feel you good to, now, though, right? Oh yeah. I mean, you have to have a goal. Yeah. I achieve one goal and I set another goal. Yeah. 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 When my mother turned ninety, I asked her. I said, uh, had to be careful how I asked her. I said, so, so what's it? What's it feel like to be ninety? She said, I feel like I'm fifty nine. You know, That's she cool. made it to 97, I believe it was, and uh, uh, so, yeah, my my dad passed away at 56, so I was excited when I turned 56, and, but, uh, but my goal, just in case, so we need to adjust your goal, because, sure. you know, uh, my goal is to live beyond 120, healthy, mm -hmm. you know, beyond 120, so... I mean, I think we gotta we gotta think that way. We gotta think about the future. Well, that that's 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 a good goal. Because um, I mean, if hey, you feel good now. I mean, let's just say in ten years, you think ten years from now, you think you'll feel good in ten years. Just I mean, really. Well, based on everything I know today, I'd say yes. So it'd be seventy-eight. Yeah. 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 And I and I enjoy. Um, having fun, not necessarily the same <clears throat> type of fun that others enjoy having, but um, I enjoy, one of the things I enjoy is being around people and getting to know them and um, kind of try to figure out some of the things that might bother them. And um, then I play on those, weak, I mean those things, so that um, I can keep Keep them kind of perked up and going. Yeah. Um, Make them feel better. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think we all have a tendency in life, something's not going quite so well and you get kind of bogged down in thinking about it. And you, um, you try to think, you know, I like to try to think. I'm an optimistic person to begin with. Um, I, I wouldn't have called you in here if you're a pessimist. Yeah, I, you know, every glass is half full, even when it's empty. Yeah. And I, I just think if you if you don't see rays of sunshine coming across the sky, then you need to slap yourself around a little bit, and things could really be bad. There's, and you don't have to look far to see evidence of that. Um, we live in a great community. We live in a community that has many good people that love to help each other. And um, we have disagreements from time to time, but that's natural. You know, uh, we wouldn't be who we are if we didn't have disagreements from time to time. I think the trick is to figure out how to get past it and come up with ways that we can agree um to to look for the the common good for all you know and so um that's that's kind of the way I look at it so there's nothing I didn't necessarily 
realize this, and I definitely believe it today, like we've got, say, 15 board members at the chamber, and used to my, my thought process would have been, hey, I want everybody just to agree with everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I don't want that, really, deep down inside. I, I would rather, I don't necessarily thrive on conflict, but conflict is not bad, you know, because that way you get to, you know, I love brainstorming is my favorite thing to do, but, but if we have conflict back and forth, we're not going to pop one another in the head, but, but we'll talk it out, and then by the time we talk it out, you may think about one way, I think another way, and then we throw in a few more people, we might change it to where it's not even the same as what you thought or I thought. We just come sure. up to a good solution. And yeah, bring out a lot of uh, good ideas that um, neither one of us had really yeah. contemplated up until that time. Did you make a good grade point average in college? Mm, next question. Is it, was yours, let me ask you this. Was your grade point average better than Woody Spears? I know you know what Woody's probably was. Probably you don't not. have to say what it was, but was it better? Probably not. Okay. Woody, did you hear that? Yours is better. But, anyway. you know, I'm, I'm one of those people that, you know, you have people that are very intelligent, mm. and you have doers. Mm. And I've kind of looked at myself as a doer. Do you think that uh, when you were in school, if they had known what ADD, ADHD was, that you might have been labeled? I might have been the poster child. Okay. I think that's whew, something that, uh, man, I mean, do, do you think it's tough you haven't been a boy once upon a time? You think back, I know it might be, you know, way back with me, way back. I mean, when I was in the first grade, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and confess this. Uh, guy ended up being one of my best friends, but Mickey, Mickey kicked me in, in the first grade, okay? About the mm -hmm. second week of school. Now, you know, I, had, I wasn't too familiar with turning the other cheek thing, so what do you think I did? I kicked him back. Well, guess who got caught? Well the last one that kicked and that was me and guess who got to go to the principal's office i don't know I, i'm sure my mother found out about that but uh, but man it's, it's it's sort of tough for a boy I, maybe easier for a girl i don't know but sort of tough for a boy to sit in a chair all day long at school you know and and that and well i had a way around that you didn't sit in it no i sat in it i just take a lot of naps during during class class yeah as as far i as took I mine could, you know on the we had little pads mm -hmm. towels probably well as best i can remember i slept through the first and second grade and then after that the third grade teacher i had woke me up and um did it hurt no it was just greatly different from taking a nap all the time and uh, I, <clears throat> I learned some things. Um, I, it was exciting at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's why that knuckle right there, we, if we didn't write just right, we would get pop. It was either Miss Carter or Miss Carter. She either second or third grade teacher. Man, just pop you. I don't think you could get away with that today. Uh, you probably couldn't. I was one of those kids that, I watched closely what others did, and I was able to, um, I only got... You manipulated the system? Yeah, I only got two um, spankings, I guess you could say, Whipping. in school. One in the third grade, it was kind of like a mass spanking while the boys got one. And then... <clears throat> the last day of my seventh grade year, I was the only guy in the room that hadn't been paddled by one of those massive paddles, and the teacher called me up to the front. He was a coach, and he congratulated me on not 
having been paddled and then he got me to bend over the desk and he paddled me so um did they have holes in it yeah oh yeah they had holes. you know you think that really had an effect on it had an effect it, <laughs> yeah let's see do they still paddle in school today you i think? can't i can't answer that i don't know yeah um, I'm my sure guess I, would be no yeah i would think probably um, not. Yeah. but you know all and right. my thinking would be it'd be good if they did. Not viciously, but... Yeah. You know, just something to get attention. Yeah. You know? Maybe put it on, like, Facebook Live or something. Well, you know, you... you no, leave. then you'd be in trouble because you're making them, you know... I remember, you know, sometimes you just lose attention. And something like that can kind of bring you back into reality. Yeah. A couple serious questions mm -hmm. and i'll think of them before i get through <coughs> do you think anybody's going to watch this video all the way to the end well they're going to have to be uh, <coughs> pretty bored <laughs> um and with nothing else much to do but um you might you might have somebody that either one of those two things or they want to look and see what not to do in a video. <laughs> I'm thinking family members only would make it all the way through. You think? Just to see if they're mentioned by name. Well, I don't know. Buddy probably won't watch it because he didn't remember to come. Yeah. But um, my family will probably watch it. Yeah, I think I think your family probably will too. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Uh, second. Uh, Maybe last. Who knows? Um, you you've got a uh, a love for picky, and if I'm wrong, you can say you're wrong. I'm, I'm wrong. Uh, you got a love for picking. You got a love for Pearl River County. Love from Mississippi. Um, talk about that for a second. And if well, I need to ask you more questions to make you really think, I will. I, you know, having been grown up and raised here, um, I've been lucky enough to have um, been able to take advantage of all the experiences that you could get from being raised in Peking. Now, that goes anything from uh, the old YMCA, Little League Baseball, um, church experiences, Boy Scouts. Um, you know, it also includes just the people that you come in contact and I have come in contact with um, through my life that have really made lasting effects on me that have really made me feel not just like that I'm a, a resident of this area but I'm more like a, a family of a big fan I'm a member of a large family um, yeah I love Pearl River County I have friends all over Pearl River County um, I I uh, have friends all over the state of Mississippi. Um, I've been in different areas of the state. And, you know, it's, it's a pretty big state. Uh, everywhere you go is a little different than it is at home. But I think they all have very unique um, things to offer. I think Mississippi may be one of the largest um untapped resources in the whole country um but that's just me you know i love it we've got problems we've got a lot of good things going for us we just um we're just misunderstood sometimes and we're understood sometimes and um, we're changing like everybody in the world is changing and uh, I just 
I just love it. I, you know, I really do. Would you say, because I, I like to think about the future, not too much about the past, unless it's lesson learned from something, but would you say that the future of Picayune, Mississippi is bright? Yeah, I don't. I don't look for um, anything gigantically large to take place quickly. I think people over a period of time are going to be become more informed about uh, Mississippi, the land here, the people here, the quality of life. Um, the things that we have to offer for people that like to hunt, fish, um, people that want things for their children to do like uh, baseball, softball, uh, soccer, football, basketball. Just uh, we have the new Crosby Commons Park that is really affording a lot of. Um, possibilities for the community and and they just got a bunch of awards as I and, and as I believe over the years it will become more and more of a kind of a centerpiece for the town um, we um, may have not been the best uh, marketers of our state through the years in our area um, but I think as other areas become overpopulated <clears throat> or they become busier or whatever with just the number of people and the types of businesses, Mississippi is just a vast amount of area that's ready, willing, and able to take part in all that. I think we have a lot of strengths, we have a lot of opportunities. The only weakness I see is the humidity. It's hot, you know, so, mm -hmm. you know, but hey, where, where would you rather live? Would you rather live here or in Chicago because of the weather? You ever, you ever been to Chicago? It's cold I've up there. I've been to Chicago. Michigan. Um, Just say how cold. Maybe we can call some people in those areas and say come visit and if they make it through the maybe we invite them in the winter I think if we can get people to come visit us and forget that they ever heard anything stupid about Mississippi see I moved here in 1998 from Rankin County and lived up there and uh, man I love it so I mean it's just uh, it's a great place to live uh, if you don't live in Pearl River County, I have no clue who, again, is bold enough to go all the way through this whole thing. But uh, if, you, if you don't live in Pearl River County, uh, come visit us because this is a, I'm just telling you, man. I mean, I don't, I don't plan on moving from Pearl River County. Of course, it wasn't necessarily my exact plans to move here, but I knew when I was supposed to move here. Therefore, I moved here. And... Uh, I think if you went to Sun Roamers Park, for instance, yeah, you would be able to talk to people out there that would tell you that are from all corners of the country that they they really enjoy their time here. Yeah, and um, so much so they come back every year. Yeah, and um, that that is a very good indication of. Um, your community and how you know you know what we seen. got that uh, in all seriousness believe it or not in all seriousness we we have one thing especially in Pearl River County and this is this is part of what I saw we have well my, this might be two things we have the uh, small town community mm -hmm. feeling and there is a feeling we got that Hallmark movie feeling okay. We're going to have a Hallmark movie. I don't know what year it's going to be, but but we got that feeling. And then we have the hospitality. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in, in a small town atmosphere, unless you just hide from people, 
you're going to get to meet so many people and develop those friendships. It's just, it's, I'm just telling you, it's different from other places. I just think uh, you're right. I mean, and, and we have been here at the chamber. We have people that drop in from outside, you know, Mississippi. And, man, they just love it. When I mean, I've never had anybody come in here to say, boy, y'all got a bunch of old rude people, you know. But uh, so we just... I guess you just need to continue to be nice and invite people to come visit us and have that open arms attitude of, well, we'd love for you to move here. What do you think? I agree. I totally agree. Um, those are our strengths. Yeah. We enjoy um, people. We enjoy getting people involved in things. Uh, once they get involved, they enjoy the community a lot more yeah, and uh, become very good friends, neighbors. That was a good morning call breakfast yesterday. Absolutely. Good crowd. Do, do, do you think anybody at that meeting yesterday morning had the Mully Grubs? And if you know who they were, just point them out right now and we'll, well call them out. Well, there was one person, but I, I showed them. They were looking... <laughs> They were looking for some information and opened the back door oh. and and told them that out in the parking lot there was some. I shut the door and locked it. So oh, okay. That was the only one that I saw. Yeah, okay. Everybody was excited and fired up. Yeah. I mean, we just get along together and whatever. Okay. Uh, next, now, I did notice one that? thing that kind of bothered me. Uh -oh. the, door, the door prizes that were handed out, uh, I thought it was interesting that uh, the lady that handed them out was a Rotarian. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the prize winners were Rotarians. Both of them? Both of them. Oh. And, and I, as a Kiwanian, I found that to be disappointing. Yeah. Well, being a Lions Club member and Rotary member, I don't think there's anything to that. Next question. If we were to arm wrestle right now, who do you think would win? Um, I don't know. No, me neither. We're not going to do that. All right, anything we hadn't talked about, because, I mean, seriously, I'm sure, no, but, I mean, people are going, my God, how long are they going to talk? Well, I've been, I've been thinking about the, um, the high cost of cleaning the streets in town. Mm -hmm. And I, would you like to talk about that? As long as it's on a positive note. Oh, well, uh, because you anytime, and I only talk about positive things. Anytime you clean something, it's positive. positive. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. I didn't really have anything. I just oh thought it. it just asking if you want to talk about it. No, not really. Okay. You, do you think there's something you want to talk about the streets? No, but I I did notice watching TV the other night that if. Um, what is it? Domino's Pizza will come and fill um, potholes in your ta in your streets if you have any. So, hmm. whether you live in town or you live in the country, uh, you may want to order a Domino's Pizza and get on their um, hmm. pothole um, replacement project. You know that helps the county and or the city out. You know. But uh, really, if you think about it, unless you're going to tell me different, I mean, our streets are clean. Our streets um, oh, are in good shape. Um, you know, uh, we, we uh, hey, there's always things that we can, you know, work on. And uh, you got anything you want to tell business owners out there? Or your grandchildren that might be watching? Well, How many grandchildren you got? Yeah. I, right now, I only have two. Two. How old I would, are you now? Um, Never mind. I think six and 11. Okay, that's close enough. Um, Last tip. The only thing I'd say is um, something my father told me one time, and I'm sure a lot of people's fathers told them this or mothers. Um, if something's worth doing, do it right. You know, start out as a child. If you're gonna, if you got a task before you, um, do it the best you can. You know, I took that 
and as I started running the funeral home 40 some odd years ago before I retired, I would every morning I'd pick the thing I wanted to do least mm. and I would do it first. Mm. Eat that frog, you ever read that book? Eat that frog. Well, I was eating frogs and then I, um, that just mans me. That's how I got the size I am. Uh, anyway, I would I would do that, and then you know a lot of times the rest of the day, um, it was easier to get those other things done, and um, I didn't feel like I was under pressure so much. Yeah. Uh, if you're in business, I think it's extremely important to keep your regular business hours, no matter how tired you are, no matter what else is going on. People build habits. If your clientele is going to build a habit, if if they see it's advertised, you're open at at um, nine o'clock in the morning till five. Be there from nine to five. Um, it isn't easy being there all the time. You know, uh, some days you wish you were a thousand miles away somewhere, laid out on a beach. Or enjoying some other, something else, but you know when you're when you're running a business, you just have to be totally dedicated to being there and offering the best service. Know your products well, and uh, treat your employees well. Even though mine may not tell you I did, but uh, <laughs> we try to. And um, I think if you do that, that'll that'll keep you pretty. Last question. Yeah. Of course, I might say that another time or two. So you're familiar with the golden rule. Are you familiar with the platinum rule? No. Okay. So we'll wrap it up with this Mm because I think this is good for all of us. The platinum rule is you treat people the way they want to be treated. Because if you think about it, if I treat you the way I want to be treated, that might not be the way you want to be treated, you know? So if I treat you the way you want to be treated, it should work out better. Well. You like okay. that? Well, that's, that's good. Anything, like that? anything I think that uh, promotes people treating their family, friends, customers, acquaintances well, is a wonderful thing. Yeah. Well, Steve McDonald, I appreciate you showing up. It's Saturday morning here. It'll be Monday morning when some of these people see this again. I can't stay here till Monday. You're not? No. Yeah, I, I got to go out of town tomorrow after church. But, um, Anyway, I appreciate you showing up. Uh, Hopefully, uh, there might have been something that you got out of this. If so, share this, like it. We'll put it out on our website. We'll put it out on Facebook. Uh, We'll put it out somewhere. We're learning more and more about social media. Uh, We do this as a YouTube video, so recommend that you subscribe to our YouTube channel because I got a feeling in the future we'll probably put out some YouTube videos that we're not gonna send out in the form of an email and um, so do that if you have any recommendations on anything that we can do uh, one of the things that uh, we'll do I don't know when it'll be but um, we, we we're not short on ideas. I mean, we, we have plenty of thoughts and things that we need to do. Speaking of Crosby Commons, Jim Luke, if you're watching this, um, we will, uh, as the chamber, I'll, I'll commit to do this, just don't know when or what, but uh, we will rent that space uh, down there, the whole Commons, and uh, we'll use the amphitheater or whatever we call it stage we will have a community event Uh, we'll get some people there we're gonna uh, make that a very 
usable spot and I recommend that uh, y'all think of things that we can do let us know we thought about uh, you know getting Paul McCartney or somebody like that to you know come you know is that Paul McCartney from the Beatles Phil no no he's, oh. he's in the Beatles uh, but anyway uh, y'all think about that let us know what we can do we're just trying to do something to uh, keep uh, keep everybody's spirits high and uh, business going and we're having fun I've got one thing I'd like to leave them with okay um, <laughs> if you run into Judge McDonald this week just ask him where were you Saturday morning when Terry asked you to be there for this program recording yeah it was funny when I asked y'all about doing this you know he said he was quick to come up with Saturday and I don't remember if he said are y'all open on Saturday or could we do it on Saturday I said sure we're doing it on Saturday and uh, then I said six o'clock and he he agreed to six o'clock knew you were smarter you said no even though you get up early and uh, but anyway buddy we missed you uh, Please just uh, make it a great day and, and uh, uh, treat people the way they want to be treated. So, make it a great day. <laughs>